Before we get into this video, we have a huge announcement. Every single Wednesday, you know we're on Whatnot, packing the house with all of our homies, and we have a brand new member joining the squad. A good friend of mine, one of the best variant producing stores in the comic book marketplace. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Carnivore Comics to the squad. Let's get into the video. Comic books be trending, they're popular, and we're here to tell you why. Hit the subscribe, slap the like button, and our Overstreet Price Guide Advisor will hit you with number 10. Number 10 on the list, Dungeons & Dragons Saturday Morning Adventures. Number one, the one in 10 variant. We are seeing $25 average sales, but these are creeping up, and there are multiple high sales, around $70. This is brand new this week, and this continues the ill-fated Dungeons and Dragons cartoon from the 1980s. This was actually perfectly timed to come out alongside the recent Dungeons and Dragons movie, Honor Among Thieves, which we've talked about on this channel before. That movie has spiked up a couple different Dungeons and Dragons books in recent months. It's going to be interesting, though, to see how well this movie does in the uh, medium term. It's going up against Super Mario Brothers, which is another extremely popular adaptation of a gaming franchise. So they're kind of in direct competition with each other. It should be interesting to keep an eye on. Giving credit to where credit's due, it outperformed John Wick 4 over the last week, which was in its second week at the box office. And we also have a friend of the show who's part of the writing team, David Boer. I reached out to him. This is what he had to say. The series seems to have tapped into passionate nostalgia. I adored the cartoon as a kid, so I'm glad to see it's still getting so much love. Now, this list of 10 is taken from a larger list of Trending 20 on the Key Collector app. And a great book on there that was also released this week but didn't make this 10 was Tim Drake, Robin, number seven, the one in 25 surge, not that surge, surge Akuna variant. Download the app. I use it every single week. I'm on there more than I'm on Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, mm -hmm. TikTok, even YouTube. You keep up with the rapidly moving marketplace. You get access to key alerts if you have your notifications on. So when news drops, you get hit with the comics that may be going up and worth keeping an eye out on. And if you're new to the app, don't forget to use the code TOM101. That'll get you a free two-week subscription to the premium version of the app. And we I think, support the show, too. Correct. And I think Tom intentionally tried to make a good transition there into number nine on the list. We're talking about Hellicious number one, which we did get a key alert for earlier this week when it was announced that Anthony Kiedis of the Red Hot Chili Peppers was going to be uh, starring in and executive producing this adaptation of this comic book. So this is a book that has some I Hate Fairyland vibes. We have a character who's the, uh, a young Grim Reaper in hell who's very excited for a rock star that she believed would be a perfect fit in this realm. Well, that person's going to be portrayed by the lead singer of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And for those of you who don't know, the first things that Ryan and I bonded over was indeed comic books. Second, the Chili Peppers. Yeah, he's not wrong. I feel a little guilty, but he's <laughs> he's not wrong, even though Anthony Kiedis is my least favorite member of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. We love the Chili Peppers, but we simultaneously hate them, and we don't judge anyone who likes or hates them. But we do have $4 average sales on this comic book. Raw high sales for 10 bucks because... This is a book that nobody was specking on. There's a trade paperback. That's hitting like $58 on the high end. A 333% increase in copies sold, but this isn't going to Amazon or Netflix or Hulu or any of the places that we typically talk about. Yeah, this is going to be an animated series on TBS. Very strange choice, but I'm still looking forward to watching it and more importantly, listening to see how Anthony Kiedis plays an animated rock star. Were either of you shocked about how many like movie slash show appearances members of the Chili's has been part of? So there were some that we knew. I mean, the chase and point break and back to the future. But really, I actually looked at IMDb and Anthony Kiedis has been acting since like 1978. So really, this guy has a lot on his resume, but uh, stick to singing, dude. Flea's actually been in multiple things, too. Didn't we just see him in Mandalorian? He was an Obi-Wan for like two episodes. He got killed, I believe. He was there. Kind of pulled me out of the show a little bit. My favorite Flea performance is Donnie, the crazy little jungle kid from Wild Thornberry. Oh, my gosh. I totally forgot <laughs> he's, about that. He's just making animal sounds the whole time. It's, it's pretty much Flea. I don't think Flea speaks human words. Yo, also, the interiors of this book are done by Kit Wallace, who you'll know as the artist of Mista Easta over at Scout Comics. Shout out next on the list at number eight. I think someone made a damn mistake. Number eight on the list, Star Wars Heir to the Empire, number one. It's the first appearance of Grand Admiral Thrawn and Mara Jade. This has been a hot book for a long time, and someone absolutely screwed up. I think they missed putting an extra number. 
This had a sale on eBay for $141 for a CGC 9.8. That's an absolute outlier. This is not a price you're normally going to see on this because we see $180 average sales and a high 9.8 of $1,250 for a direct copy. $141 is an anomaly. $2,000 for a CGC 9.8 newsstand. There's a total of 357 copies graded on the census. The highest this book has ever sold for a 9.8 was 2300 back in July 2021. I believe that was during season two Mando hype. It's down by half, but Grand Admiral Thrawn's coming. Now, this book landed on the trending 10 this week because of the lead up towards the end of Mandalorian season three. We're expecting to see Ahsoka Tano. We're expecting to see Sabine Wren, possibly possibly Easter eggs, possibly a reveal of Grand Admiral Thrawn. But we woke up today ready to talk about this, and then we got hit with the trailer hot damn. Yeah, trailer for Ahsoka dropped like a couple hours ago as we we're recording this, so it'll be interesting to see what that does to this book over the next week. I am not going to be surprised at all to see this book on the list again next week, possibly even higher than number eight. 100% increase in copies sold. Where do you think this is going to end up next week? Are you excited? We have been saying that we have been a little disappointed with Mando season three, but seeing the trailer drop now has me all in for the season finale. Dave Filoni is leading this next series, and Rosario Dawson's going to kill it. Number seven on the list. We're talking about Destiny, New York, that came out in 2021. We're seeing $4 average sales, and it was just announced this week that it will be produced by Tegan and Sarah, the musicians, to be a series for Sony Pictures Television. Now, I haven't heard of Tegan and Sarah in quite a long time. The thing I think of most are their singing abilities and their fantastic harmonies in pretty much every song that they do. We're seeing an increase in copies sold of 233%. I'm not familiar with this comic book. It has magical school Harry Potter vibes, but I feel like I should have known about it because of how successful it's been. Yeah, this book is really new. It just came out in 2021. It should have been something I was aware of, but I probably saw it in the catalog, saw that it was about prophecies and uh, seeing the future and magic and stuff. I probably skipped it for that reason, but it does sound like a cool plot. You've got this girl, Logan, who gets a prophecy and ends up saving the world. But then, you know, nobody really knows it was her and she kind of just has to figure out what to do with the rest of her life after that, which is, I think that sounds like a pretty cool premise and I'm actually going to try and track this book down and read it. A young modern romance tale, a coming of age story with Tegan and Sarah attached and I know they've done other things. Unlike a lot of other musicians that dip their toe into writing comic books, Steve Aoki, Rush, Coldplay, Coed and Cambria, the fact that Tegan and Sarah have already made the show high school based on their own memoir and they have junior high coming up soon it really bodes well for this franchise and now we got a repeat offender at number six star wars dr afro number 19 this is the sprouse variant that features bo katan on the cover four dollar average sales high cgc 9.8s are hitting 90 dollars. i wouldn't be surprised if that goes beyond a hundred soon clearly bo katan is if not one of the lead characters in The Mandalorian, possibly the lead. I mean, the title is The Mandalorian, and she is a Mandalorian. doesn't have to be Dejarin. So there are so many variants for Star Wars right now. We've had the 50th anniversary. We've got the Sprouse variants. You've got these. I mean, honestly, there's way too many. So this is the type of book that you just have to know. You see it in a bin, and there's a lot of them from this era that have that gold border that are not this cover. That's why you're going to be able to find them in dollar bins. You're going to be able to find them on back issue bins, probably still for cover price. There aren't a ton of them already graded a 9.8. And with spoiler alert, Bo-Katan receiving the dark saber this last week, there's a very good chance that she is going to be moving up the Mandalorian ranks. She's Ezra bridging the Mandalorians together, possibly being set up to be the ruler of Mandalore. She did see the mythosaur. Let's get out of Mandalorian territory and into something I'm a little more familiar with. We're at number five. We're talking about Secret Invasion, number one from 2008. My personal favorite event crossover story, at least at Marvel Comics. Uh, we have seen $30 average sales for this book with a recent high 9.8 CGC hitting $150. A 400% increase in copies sold this week, but we have to keep in mind that we've been talking about this book since December of 2019 when Key Collector announced that they had insider information that Secret Invasion was in development for a Disney Plus show. Now, in the last four and a half years since we heard that 
information, we have seen crazy record highs like $447 for a CGC 9.8 in September of 2021, and even a 9.6 going for $212 in June of 2021. So the fact that we're seeing 9.8s at 150 now, this might be a great time to buy. Four and a half years, Russ? Uh, okay, three and a half years, but we were all in lockdown for a really long time, so time is immemorial. Well, we do have a giant increase in copies sold because of the trailer dropping this past week for Secret Invasion. Is that Super Scroll we're seeing in the trailer? I hope so. But this is what I think that Disney Plus desperately needed, a more serious vibe led by Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, I'm not one of those people who likes to talk crap about Phase 4. I actually really liked a lot of Phase 4, but there was a certain uh, variability in tone. We had shows like Miss Marvel and She-Hulk that were a lot lighter and more family friendly than a lot of MCU stuff we've seen. It looks like Secret Invasion has taken us back to like a gritty kind of almost like political thriller that we got with uh, Winter Soldier, which I really loved. It looks like a straight up movie that we're going to get. Let me know in the comment section below. What did you think about the trailer? And have you read Secret Invasion? Because if not, I'm going to be pissed. Number four on the list, a book that me and a bunch of 90s kids love, Street Fighter number one from 1993, $25 average sales and $140 for a high CGC 9.8. But the recent Super Mario Brothers success, The Last of Us over on HBO, by the way, ComicTom101.store, we released the brand new Johnny DeJardin sketchbook with this variant cover with a clicker looking gorgeous and disgusting at the same time. It makes sense why we'd see Street Fighter love. However, it's not because of a movie or a show announcement. The IP has officially traded hands. Yes, production company Legendary Studios has just acquired the rights to film and TV versions of Street Fighter. And because of that, we are seeing a 483% increase in copies sold compared to last week. Just feels a little a little odd because normally we'd see this kind of movement on a book when we announce that there's going to be a movie version or a specific show happening on a specific network. Not that a new studio has the rights, but there's nothing concrete actually announced. There's only 32 9.8s graded on the census. The record highs were reached just last year in April for $290. The recent high sale was $142, as we just mentioned. And we've seen Mortal Kombat, despite of whatever opinions people have about the movies, still sell very well post-movie. And Street Fighter, to my surprise, has had more than one movie released, and both were critically panned. I knew about the one that came out in the 90s with Jean-Claude Van Damme, but Tom and I just learned that there was one that was released in the 2000s called Legend of Chun-Li, and we watched a trailer for it before before recording this video, and it did not excite us in any way. <laughs> it did not look good. Shout out to Carnivore Comics for keeping the Street Fighter variants alive in the comic space for multiple years. It's been a pretty good week for like movie trailers. A lot of trailers, a lot of really cool trailers and stuff dropped this week, and I think the biggest one, at least in my opinion, was Blue Beetle. That pushed this book here to number three, Infinite Crisis, number three, the first appearance of Jaime Reyes. I was actually really surprised how much I enjoyed this trailer. I'm definitely going to see it no matter what. This is a major moment, the first Latino-led superhero movie, but it looks outstanding. It looks like it's going to be fun. I think a lot of kids are going to enjoy this. $20 average sales and $130 for a CGC 9.8 for this great Jim Lee cover. Now, we know that Warner Brothers has had a lot of faith in this project because originally when we talked about it, it was supposed to be a TV series, and now they've developed it into a full-length feature film. The heights this book reached was $300 back in 2021. Recent sales are closer to the $100 marker for a CGC 9.8, in which there are 382 copies that exist on the census. I can't imagine the price going much lower than that. Yeah, Blue Beetle is one of these uh, mid-budget theatrical release movies that uh, HBO was working on for a while. But since then, they have merged. Warner Brothers has merged with Discovery, and there was a new CEO that came in and tried to cut a bunch of costs everywhere they could, and that is why the Batgirl movie was canceled. That was another one of these mid-budget movies. However, they saved Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle was kept on the schedule, probably because it looks pretty good. And so it's, it's going to be a lot more successful, I think, than especially the Batgirl movie. Although he may have a little bit of a bias, James Gunn has been speaking very highly of this movie. And considering Batgirl was already filmed when they decided to cancel it, I think that there's some hope in this franchise. I'm just wondering if it's going to continue to this new DC world being built by Peter Safran and James Gunn. Especially when you consider that Peter Safran is a producer on this Blue Beetle movie True. and he's co-creating the new uh, DC universe with James Gunn. It would make sense to see Jaime Reyes Blue Beetle 
make the transition between DC universes. And now we're looking at the list at number two, but before we get to that, directly support what we do. Hit the link in the description, go to comictom101.com and join the April Mystery Mail Call. One per box, I have an Aaron Bartling Exile number one cover. This is Wesley Snipes' brand new independent comic book, and we made a Tomb of Dracula 10, first appearance of Blade homage, going in one per box. We got virgins, foils, and medals going out at random, and one per box is getting a House of Secrets 92 trade dress variant featuring art by the king painter Gabriel Del Otto. Holy FOMO, Batman. Tom told me to say that. Uh, we're talking about number two, Spider Man number seven. This is a brand new book that just came out this week. We're talking specifically the Umberto Ramos secret spoiler FOC variant. Holy smokes. People be buying this book. $12 average sales, high raw sales at 50 bucks. We're seeing them listed for 40. We're seeing like piles of them selling like multiple quantities for higher than that, putting the range between 20 and $30 there. But this right here is what I would ask our LCS owner. I would imagine being one of the biggest drops that Marvel or DC has produced in all of 2023? This is absolutely crazy. I think the people who knew expected this, but a lot of people were not prepared. There were breadcrumbs out there. We did have enough hints. People had told us you need to get this FOC variant because it's going to be big. So the fact that it's the first appearance of Spider-Boy means that it's a big thing that a lot of people want. If you look at these sales on eBay, you can see multiple people selling copies of 10 and 20 packs of the same covers. People are pre selling 9.8s for around $100 right now. We know that people were already in on the secret. So if you weren't paying attention, maybe you just need to follow other people on Instagram or other social media places. The information was out there. Now, outside of the Elseworlds out of continuity, we've never seen a spider boy, especially this character being featured on the cover and in comic book created by Dan Slott. We do have a really cool character design, a lot of spec on what is probably the most liked and ordered Marvel property at comic stores. So whenever we have Spidey spec and FOMO applied, you get results like this. I feel like it's a good time to just clarify to what FOC is and the fact that every week is your deadline. It's your final order cutoff to order specific books. And they will sometimes drop in surprise books like this one was released as a secret spoiler variant with no cover art. It was released last minute during the FOC final cutoff. So you need to make sure you're up on that part of uh, comic collecting. Every week you want to check your FOC and make sure there's not any secret last minute so hidden spoiler variants like this slipped in there. Yeah, you can't just rely on your ongoing subscription. You got to check these things weekly because they randomly put things in there. For one reason, it's a spoiler, so they didn't want to have it on display for a month, which would reveal the story. But also... Covers sometimes take a while to come out, and this is their way of being able to solicit without showing you what the book's going to be, because sometimes the art isn't even ready. I'll be honest, I haven't read this. I'm a little burnt out on Spider-Verse, multiversal stuff, but this comic has a guy named Bailey, who is Spider-Boy, who has apparently been around. He seems to think he has been around and had multiple adventures with Peter Parker and Miles Morales, but neither of them know who Bailey is, and before they can really get into it, he kind of bursts out of there and leaves. And supposedly we're going to be getting an origin story for Spider-Boy in June's Edge of Spider-Verse number three. So we'll have to wait until then to see exactly what the what the real story is with this guy. For as many copies that are out there, my gut is to not overspend on this. I understand if someone wants to pay maybe 15, 20 bucks to get a high graded copy. That makes sense to me. It may drop. However, 40 to 50 out the gate seems a little high. I don't want the members to be losing out. I've been nagging you guys so often to just like and subscribe. You made it to number one. We're about to do number one on the video. And if you're still here, just hit the like button. It's right there. It's a thumbs up. It takes a little effort to push that, I guess. You might as well hit the subscribe button too, because we'll be here doing this again in a week. We did it last week, or Tom did it last week. We're back here this week. We're going to be here again next week. So, you know, stick around. Yo, we've been doing this video for over four years straight without skipping a week. And at the list at number one, the number one trending book in the world, the most popular Back issue bin book is Infinite Crisis. Numero Cinco. Infinite Crisis number five. On the list at number one, this is great. So on number three, we had number three, which was the first appearance of Jaime. This is the first time we get to see Jaime in costume. And the cover A, Jim Lee cover, is Jaime in full-fledged costume on the front. There is a variant cover done by George Perez that he's not on the cover. It's still worth money, but nowhere near these numbers. $50 average sales and $340 for a high CGC 9.8. 
The heights this book reached was back in 2021, where 9.8s hit $550. There's a total of 629 copies on the CGC census. And the last GPA sale was almost $100 less than the high we just reported on this past week of 275 and yeah, in total, we're seeing a 733% increase in copies sold, again, because we saw the trailer drop this last week. And like we talked about in the number three, we have uh, the first appearance of Jaime Reyes, but this this issue is specifically his first appearance in costume. It makes you take a, a second look at his, his, honestly, the costume in the trailer looks really cool. They showed a shot of him transforming and like the costume kind of, it was actually a really scary scene of him getting like taken over by this creepy blue scarab in the middle of his kitchen with his family. I'm excited for this movie. I think it looks like a lot of fun. Very comic book accurate. It looks like we're going to get some almost Iron Man vibes, but with a more youthful take. I'm all in on this. I want to know what the community thinks in the comment section below. And as always, geek responsibly. Enough said. Here at Ever Comics, spending way too much money like I do. We have other videos for you to check out. Peep the store. We have a bunch of brand new variants that we just released. The last Something is Killing the Children Zoo or Zoo variant is officially available. And I priced the Virgin cover for 15 bucks. Link in the description. Have a great holiday. And keep responsible.